Today's episode is brought to you by the Tax Defense Group. Due to the global pandemic, the deadline to file your taxes for 2019 was pushed back to July 15th, 2020. If you haven't filed for 19 yet, there's good news. The Tax Defense Group can e-file your taxes for you. The process is quick, and for millions of people, you'll get money back. So, what are you waiting for? Call the Tax Defense Group today at 800-850-7973 to get started. That number again is 800 800- 850-7973, and you can visit them online at thetaxdefensegroup.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Writer Junkie. Are you thinking about starting a business or a side hustle? For all businesses to be successful, you need a website. Writer Junkie offers website development, content writing, and SEO services for business websites. Call Writer Junkie today at 805-587-7966, and you can visit them online at writerjunkie.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Lakers Outsiders Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Kester, here with you as always, and this podcast, as always, is brought to you by UCAS Studios. Today, I am going to be talking about my top five things to keep an eye on, or top five things, I guess, that I'm really curious about uh, when it comes to the Lakers games before the playoffs start. So five things I'm really looking at to see how they unfold, uh, just kind of things I'm curious about. So I'm going to be going over that today, but before I do that, as always, guys, if you're like, uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube uh, or listening to this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like this video and subscribe to UCAS Studios and Lakers Outsiders on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can also follow Lakers Outsiders on Twitter and Instagram at Lakers Outsiders. You can like us on Facebook, and you can also follow me on Twitter uh, at Gary Kester. That's G A R Y K E S T E R, and of course, you can get all of our content up on LakersOutsiders.com. All right, so. I don't know how long this pod's going to be because it's, I only chose five things. I did have one honorable mention, and I'll just go over it real quick. My honorable mention was, will we get playoff LeBron James at age 35? The reason it's honorable mention is because I'm fairly, not even fairly confident, I'm very confident that we're going to get playoff LeBron even at age 35, coming off of three months off. He's well-rested. He's healthy. I think he's going to be locked in and ready to go, and uh yeah, I'd be shocked if we don't get playoff LeBron and we get to see it in purple and gold, and that has me very, very excited. So uh, LeBron, you know, early in his career got a lot of crap for not winning the big one, not getting a title, and and all that stuff. But man, traditionally he he really elevates his game in the playoffs, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. So uh, that was my one honorable mention thing. Uh, oh, another thing too is uh, when you guys are done, if there's anything that I didn't go over that you're curious about let me know in the comments what are you guys curious to see about with this lakers team before the playoffs hit uh with their you know we've got a couple scrimmages before they start the the eight regular season games uh there's going to be kind of a lot of things i think to to really watch uh before we dive into the playoffs i'm assuming that we get there so uh so far the nba has done a really really good job with this orlando bubble uh they reported today that the latest wave of testing nobody uh, tested pos- positive for COVID-19, so that is really, really good. Uh, it's good news, and the NBA is doing a really, really good job, so hopefully uh, that, that keeps up. So, all right, on to the list. So, number five, I put the conditioning of the players. Now, this kind of goes for every team, not just the Lakers, but obviously we're, we're going to be watching the Lakers, so we're curious to see. Uh, we've heard from from head coach Frank Vogel that the the players have been in really good shape. They came in ready to go, and was kind of surprised at how well of shape that they were in. Uh, their conditioning was really good, and it sounds like that they're ready to go. Um, granted, you know, I mean, they're basically coming off of an off season, which is really strange <laughs> to have the off season kind of start. Uh, I think back in March is when it started, and uh, you know, they're picking up. 
<laughs> the, the season where it left off. So it's very, very strange. But uh, we we saw, I mean, we're going to see who stayed in shape and who, who didn't. So it uh, looks like for the most part, I mean, all these guys looked pretty good. I mean, Dion Waiters even looked, I mean, really good. Looked like he really kind of cut weight and, and looked in good shape and ready to go. So, um so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm curious to see how that how that unfolds. Obviously, when you have that much time off, uh, it's it's really hard to get in game shape, uh, you know, and to simulate those those game actions and game intensity and those game reps and all that stuff. So it's going to take I think some some games uh, probably into the playoffs for for guys to get into playoff or not only playoff shape but just game shape in general. I think we've heard players say. Typically, it, it'll take about a quarter of a season to really get in game shape, um, you know, 15, 20 games or so to to really get into shape. So, you know, we might not see the team's conditioning be where where it should be until second second round of the playoffs or so. Uh, so that'll be something that I'm, I'm curious to see, uh, you know, with, with just the conditioning of the players. And hopefully, you know, you, you got to think – there, there probably is some risk for injury, and, and hopefully that doesn't impact any team, not only just the Lakers, but hopefully nobody, we don't see any teams, you know, battle injuries because there's already players that are, that are going to be out uh, that, that chose not to go to the bubble. Uh, the Nets have been decimated by injury, but, uh, yeah, hopefully nobody else has to, has to deal with that. Hopefully the time off allowed these guys to get their bodies right and rest and recover, and hopefully uh, no injuries, no injuries. So fingers crossed on that. All right, number four. I wrote down the circumstances of these games concerning the fans. Uh, The fact that there are no fans is going to be very bizarre. I mean, we're seeing it with some of these other sports and seeing kind of some of these, like, uh, I guess, preseason baseball games uh, that we've seen over the last couple days. It's very bizarre to see guys hit home runs and there's no crowd noise. It's, it's just very, very bizarre. So, you know, when we see LeBron posterize somebody or AD posterize somebody and there's going to be no crowd reaction, um, I know that there's been talk about they're going to pump in, like, crowd noise and, like, crowd simulation and uh, simulate kind of the home environment for the team and stuff like that. But uh, it's obviously not going to be the same. Uh, it's going to be very weird. And I'm, I'm curious to see how that kind of impacts games because you can tell, I mean, especially in the playoffs, especially in the playoffs. I mean, teams really, that, that home court advantage, teams really feed off of that, that energy and, and the, the buzz of the crowd. And uh, a great playoff crowd can really help a team out, you know, in a lot of ways. Now, it's not a major uh, contributor into, you know, elevating a team over another team. I mean, it can be, I guess, but uh, ultimately the best team in a playoff series seems to usually win. I mean, more times than not. But, but yeah, I mean, a crowd, the, the crowd noise, the crowd energy, all that stuff, the atmosphere can play, a, you know, can make a difference. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, it's going to be very strange. So I'm curious to see how, how players handle it, how that changes kind of the intensity, if it does at all. Uh, the feel is just going to be different. You know, the circumstances are going to be very different. I mean, these guys are basically uh, locked at Disney World <laughs> for the next couple months, hopefully in the Lakers' case for the next uh, – two and a half months or so and and they get out of there in early october with a championship so uh yeah that those circumstances are going to be very very weird very very weird uh because that's that's one of my favorite things about playoff basketball is the crowds the crowd noise is always intense every play matters uh every you know nobody takes possessions off there's no kind of nonchalant crowds like like you would see like halfway through the regular season with just any old matchup like crowds are, are into it, um, and I was really excited to see some Laker home playoff games this year because it's been seven years since we've seen them, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bummer that the fans won't be there, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm just curious to see how that impacts the games leading up to the playoffs and then into the playoffs. Um, so that'll be really really uh, interesting to see. Number three. J.R. Smith and Deion Waiters. I'm very curious to see what their role, the roles are going to look like, how Frank Vogel is going to incorporate them into the offense. I think Deion Waiters is going to have more of a chance to get playing time, uh, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. I think, you know, J.R. Smith obviously has experience playing with LeBron James, and he's played in some big games, and he's hit some big shots, also made some boneheaded moves <laughs> in, in some big moments. But, uh, I mean, J.R. has been there, and, and I think he provides – some some things to this team that they they definitely could use 
Uh, I think his ability to hit shots is going to be big. Uh, I mean, he's a fearless player. He will take the big shot if if, if you give it to him. Uh, you know, some people may not like that in certain players, but I like that when guys are ready to step up in any given moment. And he's definitely that type of guy. He's a confident player, confident shooter, good shooter uh, for the most part. And I think his size on the wing can help. The Lakers were pretty thin there, and, and I think his size on the wing can help, and I think he can play some defense, and um, especially with this team buying into Frank Vogel and, and being a defensive first team. You know, they've been very, very good on the defensive end. And granted, they're, they're missing uh, a pretty key piece um, with that, but I think that they can make up for the difference, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but, yeah, I, I think JR can, can make a big difference, and I think Deion Waiters can and can really – make a difference on this team as well you know it's going to be those two guys they're they're kind of like you know they're very talented it's just a matter of kind of their mindset and and the the buy-in uh if they're if they buy into to what the team's trying to accomplish their goals all that stuff i think they can be very productive players and i think they can have you know uh an impactful role on on this team so we've seen it with with guys like dwight howard you know coming into the year people kind of laughed at the lakers for for signing him and and all that stuff but he's he's been a very productive player and just bought into his role and that's what I've loved about this team and I think that's you know obviously the Lakers were very young last season um, but this year with a lot of veterans guys have really bought into their roles Um, and really outside of LeBron on last year's team there I just I don't know if anybody really knew understood their role exactly um, so you had a lot of overlap in what guys were trying to do. I think this team has a better understanding of what each individual needs to do for the team to win. And Dion Waiters, I think, with his playmaking ability, his ability to go get his own shot, uh, just his offensive creation, uh, I think is going to be big, especially with Rajon Rondo out. I think he can kind of step into that role and uh, provide some support. Um, with, with the playmaking, um, we saw some clips uh, get released of, of the Lakers kind of scrimmaging in practice, and uh, he had just you know it was just a one little clip, but he had a, a really nice play where he he caught the ball off a stagger screen, uh, dribble handoff, and then uh, he he found Jared Dudley at the top of the key for a wide open three. So little things like that can go a long way, and especially with with Rondo out, uh, the Lakers can use another playmaker to step up, and and I think Deion Waiters can be that guy. So I'm curious to see just how they're incorporated in the eight games um, and the scrimmages um, leading up to the playoffs and then in, into the playoffs. But uh, I think those two can have a role on this team. I don't think it's going to be huge for either one, but I think they can they can play a, a, a solid role that, that impacts this team winning games for sure. So, all right, on to number two. I'm really curious to see how Frank Vogel handles the rotation with these games leading up to the playoffs. Obviously with the playoffs, and probably more so this year, the playoff rotations are generally shorter than they are in the regular season. You see teams often go to eight and nine man rotations in the playoffs, um, and really your, your big time players play a lot of minutes um, because there's no more back-to-backs. You know They get days off in between games and stuff like that, so you can kind of put that burden on them. And I, I mean, I at the end of the day, I mean, you're trying to get a championship and the playoffs, that, that's winning time. So um, the playoff rotation is going to be shorter. But I'm curious to see leading up to that how Frank Vogel handles this rotation because I think there's been a lot of discussion about how how they're going to handle that because you could treat this essentially with the Lakers having, a, I think it was a five-and-a-half game lead uh, on the, or for the one seed. Uh, they're they're five-and-a-half games up on, on the two seed. And, you know, they can treat this like it's preseason and essentially, you know, just kind of play LeBron and AD 20, 25 minutes a night, just kind of get them some reps, get them ready for the playoffs, and they'll be good to go. Or they can basically start to try and get their playoff rotation in sync and get, you know, kind of the flow of that going and, and that way when the playoffs start they'll be they'll have some reps on, on how those minutes are going to be allocated and stuff like that. So really curious to see how Vogel uh, handles that because that's that's gonna be tricky. That's gonna be really tricky. I mean you obviously want to have a fully healthy roster uh, going into the playoffs and obviously the Lakers aren't gonna have that because they're down Rondo, they're down Avery Bradley and uh, you know, those, those are two two guys. I mean, I think Rondo they can overcome a little bit more, 
losing Bradley kind of hurts, but I, th- I think they can overcome both of them. But those eight games, I'm really just curious to see if Vogel kind of goes with a lighter approach and just tries to make sure guys stay healthy, and then in the playoffs they ramp it up, or if they just go they just go for it and try and get you know all their their, their playoff guys as many reps as possible. That way they're they're ready to go because eight games is a very small amount of games. It's a small sample size really to to kind of tinker with lineups and stuff like that with us with these new additions. So. I'm curious to see that. I'm really, really curious to see that. So uh, that'll definitely be something that I am keeping keeping an eye on because that's that's where Vogel is going to earn his paycheck. I think um, little things like that. And if if this team can just stay healthy, because I've said this on on previous pods, I don't really care about the one seed anymore. I really, really don't. I don't even care about trying to get the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals. Obviously, they're the biggest threat to the Lakers in the West, but. I and you know ideally you would like them to have to go through two teams as well before they meet the Lakers in the Western Finals, assuming the Lakers get there. But I, I'm just kind of at the belief now. There's no home court advantage. There's no fans. None of that. And you're gonna have to probably go through them anyways. So if it's in the second round, it's in the second round. If it's in the Western Finals, it's in the Western Finals. Who cares? You're probably gonna have to go through them and beat them four times out of seven. So. I don't really care when it is at this point. So, like, I really, for me, I, I would understand either direction that Frank Vogel goes in. If he goes lighter and kind of treats them like preseason games and just tries to keep guys healthy while getting them some light reps and stuff like that, totally get that. Or if he just goes with a full-out playoff-type rotation and tries to get reps so they're ready to go when the games really start to matter, you could see that as well because there's no home court advantage now. You know, that sucks. It really kind of hurts the Lakers. They fought hard for that, and they were going to get that. And, uh, yeah, now it's not there. So it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right, so before I get to number one, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, give you guys a, a word from our sponsors, and then I will give you guys the number one thing that I'm looking for in terms of the Lakers gearing up for the playoffs with their eight remaining regular season games. Today's episode is brought to you by the Tax Defense Group. Due to the global pandemic, the deadline to file your taxes for 2019 was pushed back to July 15th, 2020. If you haven't filed for 19 yet, there's good news. The Tax Defense Group can e-file your taxes for you. The process is quick, and for millions of people, you'll get money back. So, what are you waiting for? Call the Tax Defense Group today at 800-850-7973 to get started. That number again is 800 850 Seven nine seven three, and you can visit them online at thetaxdefensegroup.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Writer Junkie. Are you thinking about starting a business or a side hustle? For all businesses to be successful, you need a website. Writer Junkie offers website development, content writing, and SEO services for business websites. Call Writer Junkie today at 805-587-7966, and you can visit them online at writerjunkie.com. All right, so the number one thing that I'm really keeping an eye on for the Lakers in their eight remaining regular season games, and this kind of ties into some things I've already talked about on this pod, but the number one thing I'm keeping an eye on is just how they make up for the loss of Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo. So obviously the Lakers are pretty thin at guard right now because they lost two guards with Bradley choosing to sit out uh, due to uh, personal reasons and Rondo injuring his thumb and having having to have surgery, and he'll be out, I think they said six to eight weeks, so uh, he'll be out for for a bit. <laughs> and uh, the Lakers are, are pretty thin at that guard spot, so I'm curious to see how they kind of make up for it. I'm curious to see who starts. Uh, I think it'll be KCP. Uh, that's who I would go with. I would go with Contavious Goldwell pope just because when Bradley got hurt earlier in the year, that's who started, and the Lakers played extremely well. So I think we will see a lot more Alex Caruso minutes, which I think will be a good thing. Um, hopefully he doesn't get overloaded with minutes because he's a high-energy, high-intensity, like high-effort high player. Uh, with those types of guys, you just don't want to give them too, much, too many minutes because then I think you lose a little steam uh, playing too many minutes and it's hard, harder to play kind of all out for, for longer periods of time. Uh, so, But I think we'll see more Caruso minutes. I think we'll see Quinn Cook kind of get in there. I think we'll see Dion Waiters kind of play uh, at that kind of 
offensive initiator spot coming off the bench a little bit. And uh, I think it'll just, I mean, it'll have to be by committee. Um, obviously, LeBron is going to be the starting point guard offensively. Defensively, you're going to have probably KCP, I would imagine, uh, kind of chasing around the opposing point guards. And and everybody else will kind of fall naturally into their defensive positions. And, yeah, I mean, like I said, LeBron's going to be the the go-to guy offensively that, that creates offense and sets everything up. Uh, you got AD that you can dump the ball down to. Uh, you know the Lakers still have a lot of a lot of options offensively, and I, I think they're going to be just fine on on that end of the floor. I did like Bradley's defense throughout the year. I thought he he brought a level of toughness, um, and I thought that you know I, I just really liked what he brought to the team this year. And I'm, I'm sad that he uh, isn't going to be with the team, but I totally understand his decision. But I'm very curious to see how the the Lakers uh, make up for the loss. So I think they're going to have to get. You know, a, a number of improved contributions from a number of guys. I think you're going to have to see some more Caruso minutes. You're going to have to see KCP continue to play well. Quinn Cook's got to come in and make some shots and just hit some open threes because uh, he's probably not going to give you a ton defensively. So, um, but like I said, it's got to be by, by committee, and I'm just curious to see how how those guys all step up and and try and uh, fill the void uh, without without Bradley and Rondo. So. Very curious to see, you know, those three good minutes and, and Deion Waiters and J.R. Smith and and just everybody, everybody step up. So, all right, like I said uh, earlier on this pod, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with this list? Disagree? What are some things you're looking for that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments on YouTube, and uh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it because I'm, I'm excited. Like we're 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 here. I know you know games don't start until the 30th, so we're still about a week and a half away. Uh, but Thursday coming up, we got the first Lakers scrimmage, and it's just going to be so much. It's going to bring me so much joy just to see them back on the court, even though there's no fans or anything like that. It's probably going to be low intensity scrimmage and stuff, you know, all, all that. It's going to be basically a, a, a scrimmage, pickup game, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, but it's just going to be great to see the Lakers back on the court. I'm, I'm really, really excited. It's it feels like it's been an eternity, and I really, really like this team and the, the chemistry that they've had all year, and I'm just really excited to see them back on the court and really go after uh, another trophy, another Larry O'Brien trophy, and try and you know, really go after hard on this playoff run and, and hopefully get the job done. So, All right, I'm going to get out of here. As always, guys, be sure to uh, like this video on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube. Um, You can subscribe to UCAS Studios and Lakers Outsiders on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And you can follow Lakers Outsiders on Twitter and Instagram, just at Lakers Outsiders. And you can like us on Facebook, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Gary Kester. And then, of course, you can get all of our content up on LakersOutsiders.com. So I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah, next time I'll be on here, we get to talk about actual Lakers basketball. I'm pumped. I'm ready. Can't wait. So until next time, guys, this is Gary Kester with the Lakers Outsiders signing off.